Before that, though, I, I do want to say something. It may not be popular here, um, but one of the issues that I have, and I believe probably other photographers that are working within their reservation, is the historical preservation offices. I think there's, um, I know at Navajo, we have a, a white person running the historical preservation office. Um, doesn't seem right, actually. But one of the, one of the things I think that is, is difficult for us, because when, like, some of the questions that, that you've asked, you come onto a reservation, what do you do? Well, some of that now, these offices, and again, I'm talking about Navajo, um, so the Navajo office is starting to ask that of Navajo photographers and of their own people. I think it's wrong. Um, I think it's terribly wrong. And I refuse to sign a permit, request a permit, or even tell them what I'm doing um, when I'm out photographing. In fact, even when um, I did a project with Peter Iverson on the book, um, the Na um, uh, History of the Navajo, I refused to go through that whole process with them. We had people, I knew people, I'm one of them, I have a lot of people that know things about Navajo, and I think there has to be some sort of trust there. So I was in constant battle with this office, and continue to be in constant battle with this office, and I believe it's something that down the line in the future, and I, I hope these young people that have digital cameras that we talked about, don't have to put up with a lot of what I've had to put up with, and I think other photographers. Um, because it's stifling. It's not so much about historical preservation, but it's about cramping the style of an artist, of a vision, of a voice. And once you start having people go through a lot of these different steps, it's no longer their vision, but it's the vision that this office wants you to have and make sure everything is nice cookie cutter image. And this isn't anything against the, the Navajo didn't present here, so I can <laughs> blast them like crazy. But, but I think it is something that I think it, should be a subject of maybe a symposium on um, how do you justify that? How do they justify? How does that office justify um, contemporary work? It's easy to talk about the historical pictures, but the contemporary work that's being done, you know, Zig, Jackson, and Victor, all these people, what they're doing is very different. And these historical preservation offices, I don't think have um, the experience yet to, to decide how they're going to proceed and what they're going to do to proceed. And it would, I think it'd be an important dialogue that gets started now, not just talking about the past, but also the, the issues today. With that, I'll show you next year. So I can tell there are very few Navos here. <laughs> First thing you always do whenever you speak is you say where you come from. And I come from Round Rock, Arizona. That's where I'm, that's my home, that's my mother's home, and this is Round Rock, Arizona. So now you have a sense of where I'm from. What has shaped me is not, all, not only what you see in this landscape, which is stark and beautiful and exciting and changing and moving and anything else you want to say, but also, I'm a huge fan of photography. Before I decided to go into Indian photography, um, I would spend hours and hours in the library looking at books. I looked at, I went to school at University of Northern Colorado, not much of a photo school, but they had a good library. And I would just sit in, up on the third floor looking at books of everybody. And the people I really liked during that period were some that probably a lot of you don't know what P. Turner um, uh, was somebody in Hiro who did, they do fashion work also, but very bright and vivid colors, very lively uh, view. And this was in 79 and the early 80s. But I also like the work of people like David Burnett and uh, Salgado. I don't know how to pronounce his first name, but I heard uh, Andrew Smith mention it yesterday. But, um, you know, these people were able to come into areas and come back with pictures that I just, again, I just think is amazing. And so I think part of being a photographer is also just looking at pictures. I had a great first job at a newspaper, and my photo editor would tell me, you can either go out and do an assignment, or you can stay in the office and look at pictures. He felt both was equally good in becoming a better photographer. 
So I love looking at books early on. I'm not much of a landscape photographer, but I always feel like it's important to get, get people a sense of where I'm from. And here's some things that I also, my political commentary, we talk about historical preservation. This pictograph is in an area called the Netta, which is the Navajo homeland. And it is slowly but surely being um, placed on mantelpieces all across the Southwest. When I went back to this site, it's, it's been actually um, removed. The jackhammer um, has taken it away and it's no longer around. But this is what I feel more about in terms of landscapes. I'm not as interested in a blank landscape. I'm more interested when people come into contact with it, how they interact with it, what they learn, what we learn, how they lean into the wind, if you will, when it's dusty. This is a group of medicine men that went out in 1986 to Dineta, and it was done by then chairman of the Navajo Nation, um, Peterson Zaw, and he took a group of medicine men out there, and they looked, kind of like the oral history project, they looked at these petroglyph, petroglyphs and pictographs, and they commented on them. What do they mean? What does this mean? When was this done? And it was really a fascinating three days. I threw this in there. I did a story in, and um, on the long walk, and one of the things that was very difficult is how do you try to make that contemporary? How do you bring that alive so it's not just a bunch of old historical pictures? And what I did is I went to, to Fort Sumner, and um, I actually dropped, I shot like about three, four rolls of film, and I set up lights, and that's the landscape as you look out um, from where the, the fort is. And I just dropped the picture, you know, and only one came out. This isn't the one that came out. Um, but this was part of a, a book cover for Aperture, um, another um, variation of this. You can see my hand down there. Um, but the, the original of this is it's just like floating in air. And um, it's been on um, about three different book covers. Again, the landscape ideas, I'm more interested in what they do in it than just a, a plain landscape. Even though I work for Arizona Highways, you know, I don't I don't, I don't look and see in that Arizona highways. Um, I try to take pictures of places around that you would see like in Arizona highways and the things you see, this is Window Rock. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. But I try to wait around until something to me interesting happens. Somebody just herding sheep across the middle of it on a snowy day. This is an assignment I did for a Baseball in America project. Um, it also appeared in a Sports Illustrated. And this is one of my, my famous uh, stories that I love to tell, even though it bores people. But what I love about this is this is what, to me, makes photography so much fun. When I was in college, I didn't go to be a photographer. I went to be the first Navajo to play in the major leagues. <laughs> and I went on a baseball scholarship, and after a year and a half, I realized that's not going to happen, so I started taking pictures. But when I was young, my brothers and I would go out and we'd herd sheep sometimes, not a lot, um, and we'd always lose them. We'd lose them. <laughs> we would lose them because we would start playing baseball. We would take our gloves and our bats, and after about two hours, we'd look up and you know, our left fielders were, and right fielders were all gone. And we would then go around looking for them. Well, when I got this assignment, I went out and I tried to see, does anyone do that anymore? And I live in Cayenta, and this, of course, is Monument Valley area. And as I was driving out to Mexican Hat one day, because they had a really good restaurant there for a while, I passed these kids playing. They were just walking on the side of the road with their batting gloves. So on the way back later, I came, I stopped, I talked to the, the father. They were actually a part of a Little League team. And I went and I helped out, coached, and I spent two days with them, just walking around, hanging out at their house. And one of those days, we just heard a sheep. And you can tell, this is when we just got back, but they were like us. They were oblivious to the sheep. 
when we were young. And, but it was one of the things that was really fun because I didn't shoot a whole lot of pictures, but I remember I could throw strikes pretty good. They couldn't throw strikes. So they had me pitching batting practice all the time. And um, I used a sagebrush mound, you know, and it was, it was just, it was a blast. And so that's one of the things that I love about some of the stuff that I've been able to do is that I get to participate so much. This is a um, Kinoda ceremony when the young girl runs. This is a Christmas picture. It's taken up against the Lukachika Mountains by Round Rock. And there's no, if you've been to Round Rock, there's no trees, all right? So you have to go pretty high up and into the back Wolf Canyon in that area to actually try to find any kind of tree. Well, this father is hauling a tree back that he knocked down from close to the Lukachika guys, and he's just bringing it back. I was just very lucky just to um, stop by the house um, he's my uncle, so you know, what, what's going on, just by chance. And he goes, he went to get a tree, and oh, I didn't think nothing of it. And then they told me that he got the horse and he went out to get a tree, so I went looking for him, thinking that would make a nice picture. This guy's 96 years old. And I just like this, again, some of the... When, when I shot this picture, um, I was doing a, doing a story out in the um, Monument Valley area, and I went looking for him a second time, and he wasn't around, and I waited outside. But his hogan, which is a mud-packed hogan, the Beverly Hillbillies uh, theme song was playing really loud. <laughs> and I went in, and there was nobody there. And um, they just left the TV on. It was a solar, solar panel, so they didn't care about like, you know, electrical bills at all. And I always like that because, you know, when I think about the Beverly Hillbilly song, I think about it, it almost looks like he's dancing with the dog there. And, but they kept it on because they lived all alone. And the sounds of the TV comforted them because all their kids had left and their grandkids had left. Navajo has the largest Native American church organization and um, every year they have a conference or convention, I don't know what you call it actually. Um, and one year they asked me to come and take some pictures. One thing that's really interesting, I found, find it interesting um, from the work that I'm doing in this, the next few slides, um, kind of talk a little bit about that. This is part of a and the Doss ceremony that we talked about earlier, yesterday. And one of the things that I have found is that um, even though we talked about digital photography, Navajos seem to have jumped over you know, photography. They've gone straight to video. And I've been at, when I photographed, um, the next slide actually, um, there were video cameras. Um, they were filming it and taping it and, you know, for themselves. The family was there probably three or four video cameras on tripods. I came with a 35 millimeter on the back of a truck with a stock trailer, and they all started yelling at me, no photography, no photography. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, they were family people, so I was yelling, you know, well, look at him, you know, going back and forth because they had video cameras. But they didn't view the video camera as a camera. It was fleeting, and I always think that that's interesting. It's something I'd like to, you know, look at more when I have time. But the other part, the reason I brought this picture in is any of the Navajos out there, you know, growing up a lot of times, you go to a uh, uh, squad dance, we'll make it a symbol rather than saying it up. And the morning after, when you get up and you wake up and your, your mom or your dad or your uncle or your aunt is putting coffee on the fire and, the, and the, everything is burned down low, that's just a really nice and comforting feeling. And so this is the morning after, and you see all the little fires, and there's a whole bunch more on this side. But this is the scene I'm talking about. Back in the lower left, where you have a lot of people, and even up on the top there, there were about three or four um, uh, video cameras. This is here as an example of why you need context. I'm not saying this is a great 
picture or a nice picture or anything. Graphically, it's nice. But that, what he's walking on, what the horse is walking on, is uranium tailings. I think going along the lines of even what we talked about yesterday in terms of the, you know, you don't photograph the patient sometimes, you photograph what goes around it, even in terms of rodeo. You know, rodeo and basketball are the two biggest sports on the reservation. And sometimes it's much more interesting not to photograph in the arena, but behind it. And uh, just the dance that seems to go on behind it. Or the people like Cole Company. I love song and dances because I, my mother-in-law and my mom, they both love going to them. And unlike a powwow, you know, these can put you to sleep because they're they're so slow and you know I I can only last about 30 minutes, but the colors are so vivid. You know, purple. You know, men don't wear purple. You know. <laughs> But not only purple, but it's acne purple, and you know, and it's so cool. I just think that you know that that part of it is just so cool. I think part of you know when you, the work I'm showing, I don't. Um, my approach is very simple. You won't see much negative stuff in my work. Um, there are enough people out there doing that and focusing on that. I want to celebrate what it means to be Navajo. And that's why I try to show a wide variety, but primarily you won't see anything negative um, in my work that I will show at least. And part of them, I talked yesterday about those velvet um, things, they're just, they're everywhere. And when you're shooting color, they're always nice in the background. <laughs> this is a part of a series that I was working on with a Navajo artist, and it's just, just one shot of Chantal Begay. And um, you know, we both, he lives in Shanto, of course. Mm -hmm. I live in Kayenta, so our kids used to go to school together. And um, he moved to Flag since then, but his studio was in Shanto. And um, it was just fun. It's one of those great things. I think being a photographer is a wonderful excuse just to um, ask questions, knock on doors, or just spend some time. Um, and here, Shanto and I, we've spent many times just sitting back in the middle of the studio is a big pool table. And so it's kind of fun to shoot pool with him too. Like I said, basketball is the number one sport. What I like about this though, is if you, you see the, the mutton hanging from the tree there. This is one that I did. Um, this, her, her name is Dawn um, Skinnador Begay. She actually, I think, graduated from U of A here. And she asked me, her family asked me to come. They're very close friends of ours. And what I loved about this, and it's one, what I love about this, everything I've shot of her is she's young. She's pretty, all of that's obvious. But her sense of humor going through um, the Kindle Doss ceremony was so refreshing. I mean, it's one of the things that we, you know, like one of the pro one of the projects I worked on where I showed pictures of, uh, you know, to the to the elders. They say, you know, white people must think we don't have any teeth. They never show us smiling. And some of the work that James showed yesterday, that um, um, of uh, the young ladies smiling, um, you don't see much of that. But um, this was such a pure smile and laugh, and even the medicine woman in the background is laughing. And those of you that have been in any ceremonies, you know that laughter, you know, you think of it as Indians, very stoic, quiet, you know, very sacred. Yeah, that's true, but there is so much laughter in these things that I think, you know, I think Vine Deloria said the way to get to know people is learn to what makes them laugh.
this lady is how she looks. <laughs> she is tough, and um, she's taking care of her husband who was in a, a, a bed, confined to a bed, and she was just strong. I mean, that's not even, that word doesn't do her justice. She's the one that I told you, let me put my jewelry on. This is one of my personal favorites, only because, though, again, those of you that know, you know, you see these, uh, your grandmothers, and they have, right now, though, this was taken about 20 years ago. Now they're wearing Nikes and other things, they're comfortable shoes. But um, I always love the way, you know, their shoes and the way their dress flow with their feet. And when they went out and heard sheep, and I remember photographing and spending days with people, and I'd just be shooting their feet as they're walking. And they'd always wonder, oh, what the heck is he doing? And, um, but I, I have a whole series of just the feet, the shoes, and the, and the colorful dresses. This is a, a, a group of pictures that I wanted to show because one of the things, um, I've been hired by, by people because I'm Navajo, thinking that, well, he's an Indian photographer, so let's send him to Skokomish, or let's send him to Fort McDowell. And they think just because I'm Indian that I can fit in and I'll know about whomever. You know, I'm just a, as ignorant as the, the next person. Um, but I wanted to show a, a, a couple pictures from this, from these jobs I had, um, to kind of show you that, you know, I don't know, and yet I've, I've been a visitor to some of these other tribes and have taken it. But I wanted just to kind of show you, you know, some of the pictures that I've come away with. is Katie John. She's um, like, like they're Annie Wanika. She took on the state of uh, Alaska for her right to fish and her son signed for the Native American Rights Fund. Um, and they sent me to a lot of these different places that had legal um, issues and she was just amazing. Just amazing. We actually helped, she, she asked us to help her um, take her fishing, the fishing, I, I don't know what it's called, fishing well, um, put it it was in the water, she asked us to take it out. We totally destroyed it. Because I was there with a lawyer, and myself, and one other guy, and we just you know, demolished it, so the law firm paid, bought her another one. around salmon fishing. This is Fort McDowell. It's as close as I get to a powwow. <laughs> I did some work for Ah Chin years ago, um, a celebration of their water settlement. And I had to run around and take some pictures for a, a brochure, a celebration publication. And they gave me some baskets and I had to have them back real quick. So I just, that's my car, the hood of my car, the top of the car. <laughs> I put them up there, you know, strobed it, shot it, took it to the lab, and um, we got it published. So. Now, I have three pictures I want to share with you. You talked about young people. Um, I thought she was actually going to be here, but she wasn't able to make it. Um, these are three pictures by my daughter, um, who's at ASU. 
It's at Monument Valley, and you can imagine what the name of the rock is. <laughs> what I like is that they have a different eye. That's a picture she shot of her niece, and that's her brother, um, Brian. Remember the, the baby lap ceremony yesterday, you know, where the little baby's looking right at you? This is him now. And those are the images. <laughs>